All right, I want to do a talk on uh, a little bit of history of found-ups. And um, back in 2016, before I went to uh, South Africa uh, for the second funding offering of found-ups, okay, um, I was offered uh, to launch uh, found-ups. Uh, it was they were going to raise 50 million dollars. They were going to stick in four million initially. And we were going to do an early ICO. And if you know anything about the history of the blockchain, you know, early ICOs in 2017 was just like printing gold, pretty. And I would be a multi, multi-millionaire today. And um, I ultimately rejected, you may say rejected, and you may say, well, that was the biggest mistake ever, right? Um, and uh, depends. It depends on, yeah, if I want, if I, if, if I valued and wanted to be rich, okay, and maybe you know live my life out, live my life out um, as um, as a rich fuck, yeah. But if I wanted to really make a difference and change the world and bring about a paradigm shift and 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 uh, and fulfill, you could say whether it's a, a prophecy or a, a deep personal mission to uh, usher in a paradigm shift that that helps everyone, then no, right? So here is, and I just want to highlight this here, and then I'm going to talk about the people and, and something I noticed about one of the individuals that offered to, to invest in, um, in it. So this was between two individuals, and Chandler Gao, who is the founder of BitAngels, and now, uh, and also Alinga Tahid, which was re represented by this uh, Center for Citizenship, Entrepreneur, and Governance, right? And if you look up here under the, here he is, Professor Alinga Tahid on there. Um, and uh, here is in the person who put it together. But what, what really caught my attention is really, the, I didn't really read through the rest of this, but what, it's set up by Michael Trout, right? It's created by, I'm the founder, right? That's me. And here it is, to be owned by organizations controlled by Chandler and Alinga, right? Um, and the initial was they were gonna put in $4 million combined amount of four million dollars and then they were going to raise another 50 million uh where is it 50 million four million initial and they're going to raise another 50 million um 50 million joint right for the project to fund it to to get it going and there was a big conference that w was coming that we would be would be announced at um they did a pivot and then ended up launching serratio blockchain which was an utter failure um and uh, here is, you know, kind of like the, this. Is, so this is an MOU, and this is a good little diagram here. Here's Chan Legal. Here's them. They have the MOU. They have the partnership, right? And they raise $50 million. Uh, It's really kind of simple. And it talks about the, the organization and everything else. So who are these players? Now, something I noticed um, is uh, Chandler no longer lives um, right across from Hong Kong in the um, – in the um, – and I can't think of the name of it. Uh, 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 what was it? Oh gosh, it's Shizhen, Shizhen, Shizhen province, which is their Silicon Valley. So the fact that he has moved, right? He is sending a. Well, I don't know if he's sending a message, but he's letting people know that he's on house arrest. I'm guessing Chandler now, as so many different billionaires, he's a billionaire, right? He he basically every crypto exchange from Hong Kong to China. He was the chairman of. He had people running it and CEO. I met with this guy a couple times back in 2016. I called him General General Ch General Chandler. He did the very famous 1776 video um, when Ethereum got forked um, in uh, in early 2016. He w was organized the first Ethereum Classic um, uh, meetup groups and events in uh, that happened in. Uh, Shanghai when I was there I have videos of him um, he's quite the individual I had I have there's videos of me having lunch and dinner with him um, and amazing guy really love love of Chandler I went to his her, his daughter's birthday hung out with him amazing guy super amazing guy and what concerns me is this is that his LinkedIn profile has been stripped there is nothing now with his companies, nothing with his stuff. He, where he used to live, where he used to operate his companies, he's been moved, which tells me that he is the party has 
um, marginalized him and moved him. And I believe this is a way for him to, to, to kind of reach out there. And he just put Bitcoin long. He'd always say Bitcoin long. So he, you know, all of the, all of the farming, he once told me, all right, Chandler once told me that 30% 30, uh, 30 of all the Bitcoin that came out of China came out of his businesses. 30%. China is the biggest Bitcoin um, producers. And I said, Chandler, how did you do it? He goes, well, I go, yeah, really easy. I went to, uh, he went to uh, Nepal, right? He went over there with Nepal. And he says, uh, uh, and Nepal's uh, right there uh, where the Buddha, where the, where the, the, uh, the Dalai Lama's from, right? And uh, he goes there and they've got tons and tons of hydro. They make so much electricity. The problem is they can't ship it to where they need it. It's because of electricity, the longer you ship it, the weaker it becomes, right? You can't, you can't send it to, to Shanghai from Nepal. It just doesn't work. So they have all this excess power. So he went there and he says, he goes, he goes listen, I want you to give me free power. Right, I'm going to give you this thing called uh, Bitcoin, right? And I'm going to write a, a guaranteed MOU to buy it back from you anytime you want. And this is, a, you know, these are the prices right here on this exchange because he had the exchanges. So he went there. So that Nepal probably became one of the wealthiest friggin' provinces in China, right? He struck this deal, and he had free power to run his his Bitcoin mining operations, and that's how he did it. He's an entrepreneur. He saw an opportunity. He needs power. He went to a place where there was power. At that point, this is I'm talking about 2015, 2014, right? I don't know when he launched this first, but they were ignorant of Bitcoin, right? He's building his own process. He showed me his own processes, his chips that he was building for mining. And why did he, and, and the question is, is why did he flip to support um, Ethereum Classic? Well, because it was in 2016 when Ethereum started to talk about uh, proof of work and proof of stake and he's a he's a proof of uh, work guy right so if ethereum they were like we're going to switch this proof that now in hindsight it has it hasn't right but he saw himself losing power if you have 30 percent control of all the bitcoin right um, coming out and ethereum and, and he has all the processors that can run either ethereum or bitcoin he's about to get usurped over that control, so he saw that, and he and, and it was like the only reason why he flipped to uh, Ethereum Classic was because of uh, because of that. And here's a second little story I can tell you about Chandler. When we were at, at DevCon two, right, um, I was there representing Ethereum Classic, and I was doing an under conference. It was called UnDevCon two. Um, so you could say I was the first person to do you know to do a to a, a conference for Ethereum Classic. And uh, um, and I was me. This is where I was meeting with him and stuff like that. And I caught wind that he was going to do a 51% attack on Ethereum Classic, take over all the tokens, and basically take over Ethereum Classic, right? And um, so at the conference, if you went to the conference, you remember this. Um, the the price of Ethereum Classic was being dumped and dumped, and he had everyone dumping, dumping, and he was trying to get everyone holding Ethereum Classic to sell and he was trying to bring the price down to like a penny and it got down to like i don't know four five six cents or something like that um it got tanked all the way down there and i'm on i'm and you can look at my twitter and stuff back then um i'm on twitter and stuff going chandler gao is doing a takeover do not sell your freaking uh ethereum classic chandler's trying to buy it because and, and the reason why was I wanted, I was trying to get um, Vitalik and them to say, listen, having Ethereum Classic, you've got a bunch of Ethereum. Why don't you, you know, um, give it to FoundUps? We'll rebrand it as FoundUps, right? And you won't have a branding issue, you know, for it. So that was, not that that ever transpired, not that his, but that was a funny little thing. It was the first time ever that, that I saw myself manipulating the price of a crypto um, for it. But that's Chandler. Um, and I feel, you know, I, I, my heart goes out to Chandler, my brother, right? Um, and, uh, you know, I hope he's well. And I'm sorry to see, he looks like, he, like I said, he's in, in uh, Hendai District. I don't know where the hell that is. I guess I could open up a Google, Google Map. Let's just do that real quick. Go Google Map, Hendai District. Let's see where he is in China. Is he, is he, all right, where is he? Bum. All right. 
northwest of Beijing. See, he used to live, maybe he still lives there. Maybe this is that district is part of, no, he's in, no, they have him right there in Beijing. <laughs> they, they're they like, we're keeping you right by the capital, right? And he used to be right there. Where's Hong Kong? Where the fuck is Hong Kong? Yeah, he used to live uh, in, Han, uh, where's Hong Kong? Where the fuck is Hong Kong? Taipei? Hong Kong, right? So he used to live right here in Shenzhen, right? So Shenzhen right here is the center of, of IT. And it was right here. You could basically take a ferry. When you land in Hong Kong at the airport, you could literally take a ferry. I don't know where the airport is. There it is, right here. Right here. So when I, when I arrived and when I went there, I went from Hong Kong and you take a ferry right here, right to Shenzhen. And uh, this is where he lived. So the simple fact that he is now right there, right there, right? This is where all his businesses were. He had the exchanges and basically the party. He's now living close to the, close to, uh, the party, right, uh, on there. So, uh, yeah, that's obviously what's happening. Okay, so the next person, right, is this, I don't want to talk about, and this is interesting, that um, and he had relationships, so so I could see where this and now he is. This is a very important. He is the Ministry of Commerce. He's a council member, an expert advisor on Chinese e-commerce blockchain, right? So this relationship uh, obviously came out of Foundups, right? Because of um, because of this relationship right here, Chandler Gao and them. This was publicized, right? And from here, uh, Chandler actually went and talked at his events, and you know, and uh, invested in his uh, in Seratio, even though it was a flop. Um, and uh, there's a very famous saying that you know you keep your friends close and your enemies close, sir. Right. So he was a friend of Chandler Gao. Obviously, they're like, hey, what? Obviously, this. So Chandler is the person who is at the center of all this Bitcoin stuff. Here's a partner of that. Let's, you know, and this is how the Chinese work. Let's just, let's just surround him with love. And Olinga Tahid is uh, important because, because of, uh, the, and, and to talk a little background, I have um, um, a talk here, right? And uh, in this talk right here, and I'm going to link it to, this, to the video that I'm making here, is all about um, his, his work. He started working on what I call a, a component of the 3V engine back in 2011 when I started working on the idea of, of a decentralized startup called a FoundUp that launches a decentralized entity that you call a DAO today. Back in 2011, I called it decentralized open corporation, right? And, and it, on all of this worked on something called the open innovation framework that you refer to the blockchain today. Um, so, you know, like everything that I was working on, even though I didn't have the right terminology and I was kind of didn't, you know, I was chasing it down the wrong kind of path, but everything, the core of what I was working on basically has manifested itself, whether it is by prophecy, by genius, by a dream, I'll leave you, you could def define that, or maybe it's all delusion and none of the stuff that really I was talking about had anything related to it. That's fine too. Whatever, whatever floats your boat. Um, and, uh. But this guy here, Alinga Tahid, what's important about him is, is in, the, um, um, in the center of FoundUps, right, is what's known as is, is AI-driven. It's, it's what's known as a 3V engine. And the 3V engine stands for um, verification, verifying that, that it's in interacting with a human, right? Um, uh, validation what is that thing that you're liking what is that thing that you're doing what is it and what's the what's the what's the rating what's the what's the importance of that validation and then finally taking the two um, what is the valuation of that and that impacts for example how much of the native token you're going to get out of a day sent to you well this guy right here professor linga tahid came up with something called the uh, IOV, Internet of Value, Seratio, the Seratio quote, quote, right? And how, and I talk about it in this, in this video, right, right here. You can listen to this video that I have. Um, and uh, this image actually 
right right here is actually of that of that relationship right so here is the liking this is the this is the the, the liking system sorry why it's why it's not um why is it not zoom oh it's probably because it's an image right right and uh and i made it small that i couldn't really see the paper right because i'm not an academic so the paper is kind of blurred out and stuff right plus you know sharing you know you know whatever but but you can listen to it so let's just listen to my talk you don't need to read the paper because i'm reading it out to you on it um but uh basically i couldn't get a good version of it because i'm not an academic right it's like these stupid things like you have to be an academic to get access to to shit knowledge just can't be available to everyone um and uh i read through it so and i explain why you know why him and i kind of differentiated in our opinion because he still layers his entire system on on capitalism and i'm saying we have to leave all that shit behind and we have to have a new um uh framework which is basically built on at measuring the intangibles of what it is that i'm doing impacts the planet its living systems and in sharing with others and that's and that drives the 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 valuation of you know of your project he also believes that the goal is that um, you can measure happiness and love and everything else. My thing is that it depends on what you're doing. What you do determines whether you're happy, love. So instead of measuring that, measure activity that leads to that. M make sense? So I use the example like you can be picking up, you can, you can be working at $15 an hour at McDonald's or you could be you know, helping to clean up a beach that you care about, right? Not forced to do. It. Obviously, if you're forced to clean up a beach, it wouldn't be happiness. But if you if you have a beach that you grew up in and there was no trash when you were a child, and now it's full of trash, you'd have a lot more pleasure looking back at the end of the day, that fifteen dollars an hour, that eight eight hour day. Look back and say, "Wow, there's no more trash on this beach, and I feel better." Right? Until the next day, and trash is still there, <laughs> and you do it all over again. Right. I don't know. But, uh, you know, anyway, so uh, these are the, you know, uh, and what makes him really important now is that, you know, in the sense that he, now he is member of the party and he's in China. So um, and I'm trying to think of like, so here's a center for entrepreneurship, director, chairman. I didn't even see the serrate. Did he take his serratio token? All right. So he. um T Foundation, Invisible. Yeah, he doesn't even have his token on here. That was a failure. I don't see it. Oh, the women's coin. Co-founder of the women's coin. Let's see. I don't think this is up anymore. The women's coin. Is the women's coin still happening? Let's see here. Let's go here. Women's coin. What's happening with the women's coin? Is it going to work? It's going to be up? It's still up. Putting the E in fintech, the women's coin. <laughs> and he also has the Jew coin. I wonder if the Jew coin is still. Is the Jew coin? Does he have the Jew coin on here? He doesn't have the Jew coin. Is the Jew coin going to work? All right. So the women's coin. Uh, website and shared best practices. Got it. Contact education. This is Education Foundation. How could you trademark Education Foundation? You know, Education Foundation. How can you trademark that? <laughs> Women's Coin is a registered trademark. Really? All right. Um, seems like it's something that you can't right participate. So. Uh, Who is the team on this? Terms, private, contact us. All right, company downloads. There's no team. That's always suspect, right? Um, and I wonder if the Jew coin, how about the Jew coin? Is that going to be on here? What do you think? Jew coin. The other one, he did the Jew coin. Let's see if the Jew coin is, is up. It's taking a, a while to load. 
Um, but the the blockchain that this is all being built on, he doesn't have on here, is Seratio. Founder blockchain for good. All right, maybe it's on here. Chair oh, here it is. Chairman, Seratio. So Seratio.com, the Seratio blockchain. All right, I don't think the Gcoin now. Uh, Gcoin didn't make it. All right, but Seratio.com. In SER, S-E-R, it's S-E ratio, right? So S-E, social, um, right? Um, making everything intangible, making everything intangible in the world measurable. So this is what uh, his what attracted me to him was he has developed the equation for this and I and I, in, in, I, in the white paper I go through that and you can listen to it and I explain what parts of it I kind of throw out but there are going to be parts of his work that will tie to the three V engine um, on it except that okay uh, and there was a blockchain too I don't see I don't see supply chains. Um, you know, so this is he developed. This is you know he developed this into a, a you know is a, into a, into a mission. So those are three people in regards to um, you know the uh, the valuation. So that's pretty. I mean to think that found ups had you know. So if anyone who's like you know who who peop individuals in very significant places see the value in what. Um, Foundups offers the idea of a decentralized, self-forming startups, right? Um, that remove the need of gatekeepers for funding because of, um, um, and I can open up the the day's presentation here, right, to talk about it a little bit more. Um, by um, removing the need of, um, of investors. And this right here, that, and, and, and people say, why are you forking Deso? Well, Deso is, is built on, um, it's like someone went ahead and coded the minimal viable product of FoundUps, right? Um, and everything that uh, I described, and this is just the first three blocks, right? of found ups, which is if you look at this right here, one, two, three. This three blocks is what Deso is. We still have to take this whole path, right? Uh, we have to add the the days protocol. It's a distributive autonomous entities, right? They're connected. So day one, day two, day three, they're all connected, forming what's known as a beneficial kinetsu. So I want you to imagine companies in the not even just companies when you launch your when you launch an idea the moment you launch an idea it's a day um, and 80 percent of the of the passive crowdfunding that is happening what I call passive crowdfunding the likes the follows the shares all this stuff right here these seven things and there's probably others right so if you follow that idea if you you know if you if you vote right um, in that idea, if you're putting a stake, you notice it's green. It's the most important thing. You put your money where your mouth is. If you're actually putting your your native your tokens into that thing, right? Are you endorsing it? Are you actually you know and, and endorsing will cost a fee. Becoming an advisor will cost a fee. Joining the team will cost a fee, right? Promoting will cost. Here's the cool thing is that it's in and unlike other like a DAO will say, oh, please cash in some of your Ethereum to cast that fee. No. By you participating in the, on the platform, you're earning yourself the passive, you know, passive income, what I call a, uh, um, a UBI, Universal Basic Income Dividend, by just participating in it, right? So when people like you, when people follow you, when people endorse you, when people, you know, join you, uh, 
you know, your group or your team or your project, those tokens are going into into your pool that then you can spend that you, then you can turn around and spend within within this pool. So and the in this algorithm, right? And if uh, to look at this, uh, this is so this was this is my 2011 diagram, right? The yellow right here represents Ethereum. Everything on Ethereum I described in 2011. I'm going to say that again. Everything on Ethereum that was launched, they engineered Ethereum, right? I visualized it in this diagram. And this is the work that was shared with them. They had this work. And here's their ICOs. Here's their roadmap. Here's their white paper. Here's the tokens, right? Here's uh, the influx. Here's their liking. They said, you know, the, the whole passive income. They, they talked about uh, Richard uh, Tao. Um, uh, towel. All these things I described. So here's the new updated version, 2022 version, right? They built this, or BitCloud built this. Deso built this little part right here. Um, and uh, which means why build it ourselves when we can fork the damn thing? So let's just fork it. Now we want to add um, uh, Arduil, which is a, I think I'm not pronouncing it right, which is a data storage. Why is that? Because that's our, that's our uh, YouTube version, right? So um, we want to add um, probably Cosmos layering and also Os Osmo. I just listened to a talk on the, on the founder, and I'm pretty positive we're going to be adding and making sure that we're connecting to that chain. So we're going to take Deso, which is very, very centric, really focused on what they're doing, and we're going to make it ubiquitous so it can fit on any blockchain that it is open source, that it's, you know, and there's going to be work because the way they built it, Nader is a, is a little greedy bastard, right? And uh, he just wants the 5,000 Bitcoin plus, and he just wants to build and disrupt other ones, and he wants to be the guy. It's an ego thing, right? He just wants to be the one who does it, as he talks about in this article right here that you can click on and read, right? Right here, right? He's like, you know, social media as we know it is dead. Guess what, Nader? No, it's not social media, buddy. It's capitalism is dead as you know it and thank you for building the framework for ushering that in um, because days decentralized autonomous entities that come out of undow do's head right that is ubiquitous to any blockchain that are also came out of his head right that is managed by AI that he carries on his back right looking out of his 19 inch monitor that takes Bitcoin from the network and stores it in these these distributive organization days. So there's no way for anyone to hack days because they're all independent. They all have their own one. So it, it becomes the best Bitcoin collectively, this, this beneficial kadetsu, this connection of days that are, that are connected to any blockchain are holding, will hold, eventually all the Bitcoin will be held in these days. Because at some point, these rich fucks are going to sell their Bitcoin. And the thing is, a day to give a fuck what the price of the Bitcoin is, it's going to just keep gobbling it up, gobbling it up, gobbling it up, gobbling it up. Like a little Pac-Man, right? He's going to gobble it up. So, um, you know, so you have to ask yourself, going back to the very beginning, right? When, um, you know, when uh, back in 2016... Founders was incomplete, and yet these very top individuals, one of them, you know, understanding the blockchain, the other one understanding businesses and where we're going, both were willing to invest, you know, uh, fifty million dollars to, you know, four billion and fifty million into launching Foundups, and it was incomplete. Not only that, talking about, uh, you know, uh, I didn't even talk about this, right? Right here is, is uh, this is Brandon Kersner. Here I am in 2016 at, at uh, DevCon. This is later, right? I met, I met Brandon and his partner, Chris, and uh, he's laughing because, like, we're going to fuck the world, right? And that's the thing is when you understand the doomsday device that FoundUps potentially is, which Nader understands with that comment, right? You know, they're, they're dead. Social media sites are dead. See... I see this paradigm from the next level up from Nader. As the inventor, I see this paradigm as the uh, how it changes everything. And in this paradigm in the wrong hands, and the wrong hands would be the guy who basically sold out to China, right? <laughs> Olinga, I love you, dude. But you're fucking working for China, dude, right? 
and you're taking their money, money that's used to um, imprison, to harm, to rip democracy from, from Hong Kong apart, right? You have gone in bed with the devil. And ultimately, my work and the work of others that are combined in my work brings back a paradigm shift because there is no country that can steal and take away the Bitcoin. Once these, everyone who runs the, you know, the FoundUp's little app on their phone, which is just a web app that will ultimately live on a blockchain, which cannot be taken down, right, cannot be stopped. You're powering your, that, that action is going to be providing the, 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 the processing power, right, if every little phone becomes a processing power for open beneficial AI. Obey, obey, 0202. That that stares out, that manages the Bitcoin standard through these days. That stares out on my back, right? And the Natsukaze, the summer wind, are the days, right? Here it is, the two by four that brings down everything, are days. The days of capitalism are numbered. The days of 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 basically the oligarchical or oli whatever it is the cunt the um um the e-monopolies as they're described by you know are over and it isn't going to be nate or anything else the all of these entities are going to be ones that are ours right are the peoples for the people so ushering in what the vision of satoshi ushering in the vision of the why of the blockchain has been undoubted prophesized 5250 years ago by the mayans to return Staring at the Natsukaze, I added that, right? By 919, who is this person right here? On 919, 2019, this was 919, 2019, that this guy right here, right? Hishigawa, he is the inventor of laser mapping. All the lasers around buildings, he invented that. And uh, Hishigawa-san invited me to his private restaurant. I'm dressed as Undaudu, the monk. Right, uh, and he at the end of the night, he goes over, and he hands me this two by four, the two by four, that at the time I didn't understand. I mean, I didn't understand, right? But I was actually had a video. If I was to go to my drive, you can go down here, and uh, these are all the documents of found ups and stuff. Um, these will load. Come on, load, load. Open startup, open startup. All these documents. This is 12 years. Here's a. There is a. Where is the? Uh, I saw it before. Two by four, video. Um, I don't see it. You know, when you want something, you can't find it. Can't, oh, I know why, because I'm looking at this here. If I look at um, maybe videos. At the time, here it is. So at the time, this is at the same time, I was struggling with this video. Okay, I'll turn it down. Um, this was a video that I was working on at the time. This was coming up for DEF CON. This was in October, so that video, that picture was in September. And this is an earlier draft. Uh, this is the events that I was holding, right, where it was going to be at, okay? Uh, Blockfest.jp. Um, and uh, I uh, was... Um, you know, this is a pre, and, I, and this is, a, you know, talking about Obey that's open all, you know, all auto-driven. I didn't have the logo back then, so the new logo wasn't there. So these are all days. These are days, network of days, decentralized autonomous nonprofit organizations. Days power them. AI manage them, owns, right, so to speak. And, um, and here are days locking, you know, I call them, you know, locking away the funds. I didn't have, understand, I didn't have days. I'm drawing pictures of them. I knew this was, you know, on it. I call it, and then here's the two by 
<laughs> so we're taking a two by over to capitalism. And I'm like, dude, this isn't capitalism, right? Because this is the two by four, right? So you have to understand, at the same time I was working on this, this, uh, this um, you know, video, at the same time I was struggling to get this done, here's this guy giving me a two by four. On 9 19 2019, Undaldu will meet 19. So he's 19 on the Mind Zodiac, right? And, and and what's what's really interesting here is if you look at the uh, if you look at the Mind Zodiac for number 19. Do I have the do I even have the Mind Zodiac in here? No, I don't. Here it is. If you look at the Mind Zodiac here, right? Here's 19. This is 19 right here. And you notice the movie wheel. The movie wheels right there. That's the that's the old so the old uh, you know movie. This X means money, right? Access to capital. This is the Winklevoss twins, right? All right, hold on. Hold on. Let me mute you. Hold on. I'm on. I'm streaming right now, Joe. Hold on a second. Okay. I know, but I'm streaming. I'm streaming. I'm making a video. I, I'm making a video right now, Joe. Let me mute you. Mute yourself for a moment. Let me finish up here. Let me finish. Yeah, yeah. Let me call you back. All right, all right, all right. Okay, I'll call you right back. So uh, I'm gonna finish up here. So, so, um, so yeah. So now Foundups is is uh, is ready. So um, you know, and um, we've got some exciting folks that are that are working with us. Um, I got my old team back together. Um, that's one of them. I gotta get off the phone and talk to him. And uh, I hope you uh, enjoy this presentation. And you know, looking back at uh, you know at the folks that were there in the years that have passed, in uh, you know in in where we're at. Thanks for listening. You take care now. I'm gonna do a little chanting. End this with a little chant. On. Remember, undo people with a laugh and a smile. Help as a Dow and serve as a do. Undow do to you and yours from the heartland of Zen.